Guys, part six. I don't think I've ever filmed, I don't think I've ever done this much filming at any one venue and absolutely not in any one given day. I definitely have filmed almost as much, but this is part six and they're all at least 15 minutes. A lot of them are more long. <clears throat> so yeah, you, you're getting a lot of footage. I That's the most I've ever filmed in one day. Um, I don't think I've ever filmed that much in two days. So I was pretty busy. I was pretty tired, but you're getting Saturday content. You get one extra video this week. Actually, you get two because I screwed up on Monday and put up a video at four o'clock in the morning. So without any further ado, guys, you know what time it is. Here comes a little bit of music. So I'm with, uh, with David's son from Beyond EDC. You remember David uh, was previously with We Knife Company, uh, helped me out with some stuff when we were at USN. Uh, David's a really good guy. Brand new company. Uh, how old now? About a year. About a year. So tell us about Beyond EDC and let's look at some of the stuff you got coming. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, so again, Beyond EDC is a new company. Uh, we're about a year old. We're based in Prosper, Texas, uh, north of Dallas. And what we do is, you know, we I feel there's a bit of a old familiar formula. We get designers to work with collaborations, and then we produce them, and then we bring them to you at a what we hope to be a very good price to value ratio. So let me just go over a few things that we got going on. Now we're working with designers such as John Dempo, Dirk Pinkerton, and uh, Dylan Mallory. And so I'll show you what we have going on. The first one is the River Wolf from John Dempo. This will be a limited edition, 200 pieces, with COA signed by John. And you can see, this one is a That's rough a cuff. It's a beast, <laughs> it's a working knife, and it has that Demco design flair. I was saying, you could definitely pick out a Demco oh, yes, out of absolutely. a lineup. You got the titanium, you got the M390, you got the milk clip. Oh, so it's M390? Bowler M390? M390? Yep. You gotta go all the way. Yeah, why not? gonna go go full send exactly all right go with this one the next is from Dylan Mallory new upcoming bright star of a designer it's an integral frame oh so, it's a full integral exactly I like that blade shape I like that blade shape with carbon fiber decoration on the front M390 steel again yeah with a one-piece milled clip with a lanyard hole right there in the middle. I like the that. Clip. That offers people the lanyard hole, but it doesn't ugly up the scales. This will be coming in 2022 as a limited edition again. Okay. For our high end Terramundi. So now, these two are for the high end Beyond EDC knife we named Terramundi. That's a series. Okay. Now, for the middle end, for the Insusia one, we have the asymmetrical. And uh, I'll show you the three Dirk Pinkerton knife from the asymmetrical end. The first one is Chunk. That's that's, that's a good name. Chunk? Very appropriate name. Very chunky knife. Okay. <laughs> so you got titanium and S35VN. Nice. With a milk clip there. I like that blade yep. shape. And that's this really one I feel shape. is a bit departure from uh, Dirk's usual design, which is more angular. Yeah. And this one's very curvy. However, whether your hand is large, like, some friends like Robert or some of you are going to recognize Robert we'll talk about that later <laughs> or some other hand like mine the chunk fits it very nicely very ergonomical and this one has received very good reviews from the nice looking knife. the show the next one is called the contact and this one is a very I was want to say a uh, 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 a dirk flair to it you can definitely tell it's a pinkerton knife yeah from the worn cliff to the more angular design and if you look at it there's a slight angle from the angle from the handle to the blade so that when you hold it it naturally cuts forward yeah so titanium s35vn milk clip milk clip with a thumb stud St thumb stud only thumb stud only okay a bit of an old school and, yeah. But it flips open like nobody's business. 
And the next one, the Micro Sentoku. With a blade imitating the Japanese Sentoku blade, uh, which give it a, a wide utility use. You get your finger in here, and the rest of your hands will close around uh, the ring and the linear. Nice. And the linear will be included with the knife, so you get a full grip. Well, like I said, my, my friend was over here, he's a lineman, and he was really interested that that's something he could put on his gear, easy access to pull himself pull out, out of it. Yep. And cut it. Yep. Yep. So you get the chimping on the back, and it will be almost impossible to disarm you when you have this, no matter what you're doing with it. Yeah. It will come with a Kydex sheath. Nice. Yep. So you can put it on your neck, put it on your belt, wherever you need to. Put it on your like, gear, lash it to exactly, your gear if you're wearing like a your harness. Gear. Exactly. So that's the mid in the asymmetrical. And I want to show you something from the, the intro of what we call the Beyond EDC. So Beyond EDC, the Beyond EDC Beyond series. EDC series from Beyond EDC. We have this, the Geo knife from new designer Nick Piat. Who? A Nick Piat. P I A T T. Okay. So this one was first debuted at the Blade Show. So Nick designed his first knife and we love it. That's that is that it's an attractive looking knife. Front flipper. Okay. Hey, I didn't embarrass myself. I actually opened up the first shot. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at front flippers. I, I'm, I'm bad at them too. It's because I got really big hands. And they happen to just not be in position. But I did play with that one and I like that. Yeah. You got a thumb opening, you got a flipper opening, and you have a green and tan kind of match each other very nicely. Then you have a reversible left and right clip. Nice. For those, for those weirdos that are left-handed. The slip coming from Dirk Pinkerton. Another Dirk Pinkerton design. Yep. You're gonna see a lot of Dirk Pinkerton designs from BNDC. I like the that. Gara. I like that a lot. The Gara, I like this one because the Gara has a hook build, has a hook blade so that you can do a lot of draw cuts, but it's not so hooked that it loses utility value. And it, it's not so deeply curved that it would be so difficult for a lot exactly. of people to sharpen. And one of the unique things about it is that the opening is on this groove on the blade. Like a, a fuller flipper. No, fuller flipper, right. So I like it because no matter where you like to put your finger to open it, you can put it along the blade and get it open. Yeah, I was, play, of, I was playing with that one yesterday and I like that a lot. I'm a bit old fashioned guy, I prefer the uh, the one hand opening where I, I keep in control of the blade through the entire opening process. Like, like a slow roll as opposed to like roll. a snap. And the new Custos from Dirk. You got Macarta and you have a stainless steel blade. You have a steel clip. So this one is one of Dirk's, uh, again, utilitarian seam designs. Yeah. Like that. So one of the last thing I will show you is this new prototype I received. Has no name yet. I received literally the day before Blade West. You can see it's a very curvy water drop. Yeah. Yep. Close very nicely. Has a low right clip that can be reversed from left hand carry, right hand carry, and opens quickly. Yeah, I, I was playing with that too. That's got a yeah. really good action. This one has really got a really good reaction at the show. So yeah. we'll be definitely going into our 2022 lineup. Those those sca almost scalpel shaped blades seem to do really well. For utility, yeah. For, yes. for almost everything you need to cut, the high flat grind just cuts through everything without having to worry about the, uh, the material separation. Yeah, it does. It does. So, is that? So that's what's coming out from uh, Beyond EDC for the last part of 2021 and the first part of 2022. So keep your eyes open, guys. I'm sure you'll be seeing these in stores and online and things like that. And, and support David, It's a good, he's a good dude. Yes, absolutely. I'm a good dude, so support me, please. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Mike. And this is, this is Robert Vaughn. If you guys recognize Robert, if you ever saw a guy cutting a big, big chunk of blue fucking rope on a cold steel video, uh, that's the guy that did it. I was really happy I got to meet you. I gotta uh, say that. Thank so. you. All right, so that's Beyond EDC. You got cool stuff coming. All right, of course I had to stop because, well, I'm working the booth for artisans, so I had All to stop right. and talk to him. Well, took you long enough. Sort of. Well, I figured we'd wait until it kind of cleared out a little bit. So Russell, shh, let's talk about what's new. We already know what's going on back here. 
let's talk about what's new and what's coming. Cool. All right. So, first of all, our fancy, fancy prototype of the year. We have a new design by Ferrum Forge. Uh, forgive me, I forgot the name on this one. I forgot to ask Elliot while I was here, so uh, I feel dumb about that. But this is a slick looking. I mean, it's like it's super Ferrum Forge. Look at this. Yeah, you you can pick you can pick that as a Ferrum Forge out of yeah. the lineup. That is good. Action's great. We did for the first time. We did this nice gym backspacer. Clip looks amazing, and this still has that nice finger flicky action with that big old choil there. But the cool thing is this whole section here. Uh, I know it's kind of design. It's part of the design flow, but it does add a nice sound to the knife. There's this nice kind of like ting to it. Yes. It sounds really good. And again, great man. Very very forgy. Has that whole like you know. It just looks like a, it looks like a very forge, man. It, it looks like it looks like something from a space movie. It really does. I dig it. So we should be getting this one out fairly soon. But I'm pretty stoked about this guy. So that's going down next, next, next. This is the Ahab, designed by Nick Designs. Our buddy Nick Rogers, Nick Rogers. friend of the channel. Uh, this, this product has wood scales. I'm not sure if we're going to run with the wood, but uh, it works pretty well for this one. He did like the wood. He did like the wood on it. Got this one super thin, super slicey, really thin blade, and it's pocketed to all heck, so it's crazy light. It is. That is one of the lightest knives at the show. It is incredible. There, and considering the, the blade's so wide, this thing is a slicer. Check, check that out. Just look at that. Yeah. Thin stock, very finely done, really just a very interesting design. We may have to do a couple little tweaks to kind of make it all work, but I think so far Nick's been happy with it, and uh, this we're looking again kind of early 22. <laughs> Maybe this year we can really swing it, but we shall see. So that is Ahab. Ahab. All right, so everyone asked about it. Everyone, everyone, all year. Freaking so long. There we have the larger version of the Mylia. This is the more, the more Mylia. Mylia, which I, I like that. Yeah. Swag's behind there. She uh, she likes it. Worked out well. This is the three inch version of the Mylia. Finally, 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 after about a solid year or more of people asking, we did it. It's coming out soon. We put this one on the front of the list. It is getting done soon. So look out for those within the next few weeks, possibly just like a month, a few weeks, real soon. But that is the more Mylia. Also, this one said doing the uh, the other accents, we went with a gold or bronze accent on these. Kind of gives it a bit more pop. Really happy with the way these turned out. The weight is nice. It's nice and substantial. Action is just as good. Super happy the way this fits in hand. Cannot and I could much. carry that one and it's not going to come up out of my pocket. Yeah. That's the only reason I didn't carry the Mylia that I had right, was when I would sit one. down and it would come up out of my pocket. All right, so now we have some more fixed blades. Trying to get into something a little bit different. You know, you had the first fixed blade we did, at least the first designer one. Hey, I'm sorry. Hey, but, hey, but, hey, but, put that away. Put your finger away, Mike. You know, someone's going to chop it off. So I, I actually I like these a lot. These are really good. So we're doing some collaboration with Joe Flowers, uh, who is a fantastic dude who is very energetic. We have the first one here. We actually have multiple variations of this one. There's actually three variants with handle materials. This is the Hyper Light. Oh, God, that's gunky. Let's get that. Ah, it's okay. Everyone's My lens things. probably is as well. So that is the Hyper Light. This is a backpacking outdoor utility knife. The thing about this guy is super thin, super light. It is really light, and it is really, really comfortable. Yes. The goal for Joe was to make a four-inch blade knife that was under three ounces. It's a tough thing to do, but we wanted to give it a shot. This one didn't quite meet it. It's like, it's hovering around uh, 3.2 something. So it's not exactly heavy, but it's not hitting that under three. This one is though. So we have the unscaled version of the Hyperlite. Cutouts, you got wrenches, you got a bottle opener. And this one is hitting 2.98, just barely not. So it's under, it is an under three this fixed blade. It is under three ounces. And these are an RPM9 steel. Joe is actually testing his in the Amazon as we speak. He sent me a text this morning. I think he's like carving out a canoe or something. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, seriously. That, that is like. Yeah, I know. But this thing is really meant to be something for the backpacking crowd. This yes. is a chuck in a bag. Do Ultra everything. light, still usable, yep. functional. And of course, you can wrap the handle with some cord, keep it pretty simple. But this. This one is, it's a little tough in the hand because of the thinness, but this one, 
this one in the hand is Yeah, that one, that, I, I really, really like that one. This one also actually does not have the wrench and bottle upper underneath this. It's actually just diagonal lines cut in to reduce the weight as much as possible to compensate for the uh, scales, but it's great. It is yeah. real comfy. It is like a little baby machete. You see where the little, uh, little butt piece is there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I'm probably one of the most comfortable handles I've felt Tiny in a long time. Yeah. So, way to go, Joe. And then we have one more from him. And this was kind of a... This was an oddball. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong sheet. My bad. This is an oddball, but it's super cool looking. One, we did a really good job on the Kydex. I, I, I love that. I love that sheet. Oh, it's awesome. So, this is the Wreck Heart. It's a Kephart style dagger. Yeah, now, this, I, it's this is, so nice. It's got a false edge on top because, you know, it might be a little tough to deal with, but it is a bushcrafting knife. The handle is actually almost kind of teardrop shaped. So you get a lot of purchase in hand, super comfortable. That fuller gives it this slightly tactile look and it just feels really good. That, yeah, I don't know too much more to say about this because this is just that, super that's impressive. Just that that's a knife that really like that blade shape. I really really dig it. Yes, it's a talker. Yeah, it's a talker. We do have CGRB in here. We're probably going to switch over to the Artisan brand to kind of give it a little more souped up steel. Uh, right now we have it in the RPM nine, but I think we're going to look into doing something a little bit different. But we shall see when this goes into production. I I, I really like that. It's nice. It's so slick. So that's what's new, huh? That is what's new this year. Along with all the show specials you already saw, we have a pretty full booth this time, and we seem to be doing quite well. It's been fun. I've uh, I've been in and out. I was I, I was in the booth yesterday, and I well, I was in and out. But I I have been filming all day today. But I've seen that it's been busy. Mm -hmm. It's so. been a good show. Yeah. A little small, but good. All right. Well, thank you, Russell. Um, you, you know you'll get to see this when it goes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's artisan cutlery. All right. So I'm over here with Benjamin from Jack Wolf Knives. So kind of tell me about uh, what's going on. I know that you've got some really really nice slip joint knives and stuff over here. So just kind of walk us through what's going on with Jack Wolf Knives. I'm happy to do that for you and thanks for coming by to visit. So we're Jack Wolf Knives. We have traditional knives in modern materials. These are slip joint knives. They don't lock but they walk and talk. Our knives feature M390 hollow ground blades, micarta scales, titanium liners with integral bolsters, a real nice smooth action. They are. They close dead center. We have 11 models on the table for you to check out. These are all prototypes. We'll have knives for sale, estimated Q1, Q2 of next year. Okay. We're showing our packaging concept today as well. The knives are gonna Oh, come. that's your packaging? That's the packaging. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So, inspired by traditional knives that come in cardboard tubes. Yeah, the tubes, yeah. The tubes. Well, we're using aluminum screw cap tubes, airtight. The knife will come wrapped in a microfiber cloth with my logo. There'll be a leather carry sleeve inside so it can ride in your pocket, not get scratched by your pocket. Keys. Nice pocket slip. That's pocket something slip. a lot of knives are missing these days. I agree. The artwork was all drawn by Sean Tiffany, an artist who's worked with Marvel Comics. The art is inspired by the names of the knives. The names of the knives are inspired by their historical patterns or whatever creative thing I could come up with. That is some sweet artwork. I like that. I will tell you what. That's the, this is this is it, and it's light, guys. What I, what you're not feeling is that that is very very light, easy to carry, but it doesn't feel. I, I mean, it's substantial. And good God, that is thin behind the edge. Real thin behind the edge. High hollow grind. Yeah. Great cutting knife, great pocket knife, paying respect to the designs of the past with the materials and manufacturing practices of today. Nice. I like it. You guys can find me at jackwolfknives.com, on Instagram at jackwolfknives. I'm also on Facebook personally, Benjamin Belkin. Feel free to reach out anytime. If you have any questions, I'm always here. Good morning. Blade Show West is over. The Hobbit is still sleeping. I am packing. I'm very tired. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, scurry on. Go away. Hey, Mike, how was your trip back from Blade Show West? Ah, relatively uneventful. 